Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Today, let's talk about headroom, why you need more headroom in your mixes if you want them to sound good, and here are three ways to get that headroom. What is headroom? Headroom is simply the difference between your loudest peak of your mix. This is the master fader. Let's say the loudest peak and the ceiling at zero dB FS, which is full scale. And the whole idea here is there is a ceiling in the digital world. There is a ceiling. And when your, your audio gets to that ceiling, it doesn't sound good. It, it clips, it distorts, and uh, it just isn't pleasing. Digital distortion isn't what we like. Analog distortion, very different, very nice. And so I don't have a whole lot of time today to go over it, but we have come out of an analog era where we were told, maybe you've been told this, to record everything as hot as you can without clipping. And if you do that and you get to the mix, you got all these tracks that are just peaking way up here, and maybe you, you didn't clip, that's great, but now you get a bunch of those tracks together, you're gonna clip your mix bus. Take a look at this. I think it's freedom. Right? I already clipped and I'm peaking at like minus one, minus two, like it's just too much, too much going on. Your software won't sound as good as it possibly can if you're cramming everything up to the ceiling. It, this is a simple problem to fix. I'm going to give you three ways to create more headroom because the goal is, is to have as much headroom as we need so that it sounds musical. We can increase the overall volume later in mastering. So it's not, don't worry about it getting quiet. We actually just want it to sound good. And I'm going to give you three ways to do that. The first way is pretty simple. You just turn tracks down, okay? Uh, in, in Pro Tools and other DAWs that have clip-based gain, you can come up to a track, like let's say this bass, and you could say, all right, let me go up to this little fader and click and pull it down. Okay, that literally reduces the gain on the actual audio wave itself. So anything you do on a clip level in Pro Tools or any DAW is gonna reduce the gain before it hits any of your plugins, before it hits your fader. So this level of gain happens before our inserts up top and then before our fader down here. Okay, so you could start there by pulling things down if you don't have clip-based gain, you could use something like a trim plugin where you can basically trim it down here. So I can turn it down there. Some DAWs have a trim pot or a trim slider or trim input meter you know, at the top of the console view like this already built in. In Pro Tools, they don't. You just drop in the plugin, but you can take care of it there. So you could systematically go through on each track and see what needs to be pulled down, or you could pull down every track by 3 dB, 4 dB. In fact, let's do that just to make it simple. We could go all the way through here to the individual tracks, and we could, well, let's do it this way. Let's insert one. And let's pull it down minus six, let's say minus 6 dB, and then I will copy that across all my tracks. All right, now I've got the trim plugin on all of my audio tracks. They're all pulling down minus 6 dB. Now we can take a look at how my headroom is doing on the master fader. I think it's freedom when it's already won. I feel the spotlight. Much better. We're peaking at minus 5, which is much, much better more in the target zone. So that's the easiest way to do it. Now, the question you might ask is, Graham, why don't you just pull the faders down? And the reason why is, yeah, I'm going to pull the faders down on some of these tracks to actually create the balance I want, but I want to control the gain before any plugins and before any fader moves, because if I change the fader move later and bring it up, or if I automate it, it doesn't really help. So turning it down on the clip level, which is ideal because then you don't need a plugin, you can just take care of it manually, visually, or with a trim pot or a trim plugin at the top of your plugins, allows you to just start with a lower bass level for all the tracks, no matter what plugins you throw on them, and no matter what you do to the fader, it's a better way to gain stage. So that's step number one to reduce your level and, and increase 
your headroom, which will make your mix sound better. A simple way to do it also is just to use a good old fashioned high pass filter, okay? There's so much sonic real estate being taken up by low end that you don't need on all your tracks. Now your basses, your kicks, this stuff, like that's all my low stuff. I don't need to high pass that necessarily, but the piano, the effects, the, this thing, or this thing, what is it here? Even guitars here. So the guitars are a good example. These do not have to ha ha need to have that low information. So I just grab an EQ. I'm going to turn on the HPF or the high pass filter here, make it a little steeper. HPF it allows the highs to pass through. That's why it's called a high pass. Or it's also called a low cut, which makes more sense. And you could roll everything up to like 100, let's say on that, and I'll copy that over to the other guitar. And take a listen to this. It's gonna sound still like the guitar, just less woofiness at the bottom. It still sounds good, still's got crunch, it's a little more tightened up. I don't hear a lot of change. But what I'm doing is rolling off a lot of sonic information. So if you have a high pass on almost all your tracks that don't need stuff below 80 hertz, below 50 hertz, below 100 hertz, you will create more headroom and keep all the mid-range and upper stuff that makes this, the track sound great. So having high passes across your tracks will add a ton of headroom to your mix without losing any of the good stuff. And then step number three is to do a cut in the low, mid, muddy range. I call this a mud cut. There is so much that happens on tracks in this range that you don't necessarily need. Now you can go too far and make a track really thin and brittle, so it depends on the source material, but a lot of times I'll get stuff where the mics were too close to the source. Uh, everything's a little super beefy because we want it to be as thick as possible, but now you got 30 tracks that are super thick, way too much low end information that we can clean it up with some low cuts. So let's take a look at, let's even take like uh, the vocal, let's say. I've taken freedom. Let's grab an EQ. And let's go look. What I do is I grab a low mid, you know, band and I'll just make it narrow. So let's do the orange one. I'll make it narrow. I'm gonna boost it up high and extreme so I can hear more accurately what's happening at that frequency range and get a feel for what this vocal sounds like at different frequency spots. Sweep it around until I find where there's a lot of buildup. And I'm, I'm gonna look between 200 and 500, maybe 300 and 500. 400 tends to be a culprit, but you know it's a range. And when I find it, I'm gonna cut it. I've taken freedom. When it's already won, I steal the spotlight Away from the sun I know that I take for granted All that you've ever done But you give it away You give it away So 392, that's really close to that 400 zone Just sounds boxy Not a useful frequency So let's just subtract 3 dB of that, you know? Which is, again, 3dB is going to be like, eh, kind of noticeable, but it's a it's a decent chunk of volume. Let's take a listen if we can even hear a difference with only 3dB. I've taken freedom. I've taken freedom. When it's already won, I steal the spotlight. Right? It's just a little more clear. Nothing crazy. But if you take out 3 to 6dB of whatever that offensive frequency is, let's go find one more. And another track, even the basses, right? So there's a, uh, let's see. What do we got here? I'll take it free. Right, let's take this one. This is kind of like the main hook bass synth. Let's see if there's something that's unuseful here that we can remove.
Like 243, that sounds kind of blech there, right? I didn't, when I got closer to 500, I liked some of the aggression that was coming out. So I don't want to kill that. And I don't want to kill the low end. So let's take out three of this. Let's take a listen and we'll bypass it. Yeah, so it's not much different. So this is a sneaky way to not really change the tone of your tracks, but remove 3 dB to 6 dB here or there from a lot of your tracks. All of that is gain that you're gonna get back on the master fader. It's all gonna give you more headroom. So those are your three ways to create more headroom before you even play with the balance of the faders and before you add any EQ, compression, effects, all that kind of stuff. And what this is gonna do it's just going to ensure that you get the cleanest, most pleasing version of your mix possible. You gain nothing by cramming all of your sonic information right near the top, right near the point of failure, and you lose nothing by turning everything down and freeing up headroom. If anything, you gain a lot more clarity on your tracks. I think your EQ will come together better when you have less low mid mud and less sub 100 mud on tracks that don't need it. I think you actually will hear more clarity, but I'm not even talking about how it sounds in terms of the tone. I'm just talking about opening up headroom so that your mix can come together. And if you want numbers, if you're a numbers person, I would say shoot for peaking at minus six while you mix. Your average volume will be down here, right? So if we turn everything on. I'm thinking freedom when it's already won. I feel so like my average volume is minus 15, right? That's where it is right now. Uh, but my peak volume was up here. I think it's freedom when it's already won. I feel the spotlight. Minus six to minus five. And if I did more of those high pass frequencies, or high pass filters and low mid cuts, I'd probably get that down to peaking at minus six. That is plenty of headroom. That's great for a mix to sound its best. And then when you master it later, or if you send it off to mastering, your mastering engineer will thank you because you will have plenty of headroom for him or her to work with when it comes to limiting and all those fun little tricks. So try it out on your next mix. Increase your headroom. It's going to sound better. Now, two things. One, let me know in a comment below if you're already doing one or two or all three of these headroom tricks. And if you're not, which one are you going to use right now? Because at least use one of them. It's going to help tremendously. Leave me a comment below this video. And two, if you want to dive deeper into some of my best mix tricks, and since we were talking about mastering, mastering tricks, I've got an entire guide for you called my Six Steps to a Radio Ready Song Guide. And mixing and mastering are two of the six steps. And I'll give you some best practices, some tips and tricks on those phases to help you get your song to sound as good as possible before you release it on Spotify, Apple Music, or on the radio if you're so lucky. So I'm going to help you do that. It's a simple framework. It's a helpful guide, a quick read. But the goal is download it and keep it and reference it every time you sit down to mix because you're going to forget. You're going to forget some of this stuff. I forget. But you can reference it any time you like. You can grab that guide for free at RadioReadyGuide.com. Put the link here in the video. It's below in the description box. Grab it at RadioReadyGuide.com. Download it. Apply it. Your songs will thank you for it. Have a great day. Make some great music. And I'll see you on another video real soon.